Merry Christmas. Quick reminder that we will have two drive-in worship services on Christmas Eve at 4 and 5.30. So even if you join us here online, you're welcome to join us in the parking lot as well. This Sunday, December 27th, the annual Lessons and Carols worship service will be available online only. There will not be a drive-in worship that morning. At the regular drive-in time of 9.30 a.m., Josh Weinhold will host a time of casual conversation uh, and fellowship via Zoom. Uh, please check the constant contact email or the CTK website for that Zoom link. An article I read a few years ago said, but just for a moment, just this week, it's suitable to recall that Christmas always arrives in a frustrated and troubled world. Christmas always arrives in a frustrated and troubled world. And so it is again in 2020. Jesus is born again tonight in you and in me. And it's Christmas. From our house to yours, a very blessed and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you, for the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth, we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day, wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult while dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you. It was a silent night, a night so quiet imperfections in the asphalt faintly echoed through the interior of the car with each revolution the tires made, pulling a 1991 Mercury Tracer station wagon south along Highway 61. A night so silent, the sounds of a six-year-old kindergartner and a toddler just turned three, fast asleep, on a makeshift bed of pillows and blankets, atop folded rear seats and cargo space, 
purred in a soft, rhythmic duet of inhales and exhales. A night so calm, smoke from chimneys rose straight above farmhouse roofs. A night so bright with the glow of a December moon, the snow-covered landscape shimmered like tinsel dangling from a Christmas tree. It was a holy night, a night so sacred, I'd attempt the impossible to experience its splendor. Drive five hours to and from McVisitation, the centrally located McDonald's where I'd recoup my young children from their mother. Spend a few hours with my mom and siblings for dinner and a gift exchange. Then back into that Mercury Tracer for another two and a half hour trek to Winona, Minnesota. All of this to hear my dad, the pastor of Central Lutheran Church, tell the story that I had heard him tell on so many times before at the midnight candlelight worship service on, on Christmas Eve. It was a silent and holy night. You know about such a silent and holy night too. You too can recall stories and memories from days gone by when you too would attempt the impossible to experience the splendor and the wonder of the night, to hear again the story spoken moments ago as written in the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went with Mary, to whom he was engaged. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. In that region were shepherds keeping watch over their flock. An angel of the Lord said to them, I am bringing you good news of great joy. A multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. It was a silent and holy night. Was it? In reality, the story of this night, which has captivated millions through the ages, is that it was far from silent, far from holy. Authoritarian political rhetoric, rush hour snarls of plodding hooves and sandaled feet, cries of birth pains from a tired and frightened young girl, the, the supportive yet ineffective encouragement of a bewildered fiancé, the clear and confident proclamation of God's messenger, the chorus of the heavenly hosts, the shepherd's astounding revelation. Such were the sounds that rang out on that silent and holy night. Yesterday as today, the world around us is far from silent and holy. Last week, 300 children were abducted at gunpoint by a jihadist group in the Nigerian state of Kitsana. In Safe Haven, Mississippi, a two-year-old boy was abandoned at a Goodwill store with nothing but a bag of clothes and an anonymous note. 
Last Saturday, four people were injured and 33 were arrested as protesters and counter-protesters clashed in Washington, D.C. A Gainesville, Georgia mother faces murder charges after stabbing her children, a five and a six-year-old. Twelve million people in the United States will lose unemployment benefits after Christmas. Our home state, Indiana, currently has the second highest per capita COVID hospitalization rate in the nation. Jody Doring, an emergency room nurse in South Dakota, while appearing on the Newsday program on CNN, talking about a, treat that, a tweet that she had written, which went viral, said this, quote, from her tweet, quote, I have a night off from the hospital. As I'm on my couch with my dog, I can't help but think of the COVID patients the last few days. The ones that stick out are those who still don't believe that the virus is real. The ones who scream at you for a, for a magic medicine while gasping for breath while on 100% vapotherm. The ones who call you names and ask how come you're wearing all that gear because they don't have COVID, because COVID isn't real. Their last dying words are, this can't be happening to me. It's not real. They should be FaceTiming their families. But the anger and the hatred directed toward me and the other nurses I can't believe those are going to be their last words and thoughts, end quote. This is the real, if this is the reality in which we live, why then? Why do we come year after year to sit in silence and darkness? Why do we come to sing silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright? I can only tell you why I come. When I was a newly ordained, one of my responsibilities as the pastor of junior and senior high ministries was oversight of the Christmas Luminary Project. Every year, 500 luminaries were made, then set to an outline the entire parking lot and grounds of the church, then lit before the first of six Christmas Eve services. That, uh, that first year, my first Christmas Eve as a pastor, for some reason, during a respite in the services, I walked outside in my robe and stole. I walked a distance from the church, turned back, stood there, and simply took it all in. It was breathtaking. The night air was cold and crisp. The snow-covered landscape shimmered in the moonlight. The glow of 500 luminaries bathed the grounds with soft, flickering light. And then, one after another, cars streamed into the parking lot. And it was still, and it was quiet. In that moment, I knew I was standing in the presence of something indeed holy. Something so captivating that it kept people coming. It was indeed a silent and holy night. I've stood outside 
by myself, taking it all in for a brief moment every Christmas Eve since. You see, for, for as much as the world around us is riotous and ugly, repugnant and inequitous, so far removed from being silent and holy, I want to believe that standing outside by myself, taking it all in, even if but for a moment, that I feel with every fiber of my being that all is calm. And that all is bright. I want to believe that the story of the, of the wise men and the star, the, the shepherds and the angels, and the great hymn of joy that the angels sang is, is more than legend, more than fairy tale. The lovely dream that never came true. A lovely dream? That is all? Who knows what the facts of Jesus' birth actually were? If you and I had been there at the birth, we might well have seen and heard things that would be hard to reconcile with the way the world actually is. But of course, that is not the point. Because the gospel writers are not really interested primarily in the facts of the birth, just as the people who love us are not really interested primarily in the ways in which we were born and how from that world was never the same again. How our whole lives were changed with a new significance. Whether there were 10 million angels there or just the woman and the man. Whether the world around them was silent and holy or riotous and repugnant. When that child was born, the whole course of human history was changed. That is a fact as hard and as blunt as any. For better or worse, it is a truth that for 21 centuries, there have been untold numbers of men and women in untold number of ways have been so captivated by the child who was born, so caught up in the message he taught and the life that he lived, that they have found themselves profoundly changed with their relationship in him and with him. And they have gone on proclaiming as the writers of the Gospels proclaimed before them, that through the birth of Jesus, a life-giving power is released into the world. This is the central truth Luke is trying to convey in his account of the nativity. It is a truth which no language or legend seemed too extravagant to convey. What the birth meant to them, to the world, was the truth that mattered to them most. And when all is said and done, perhaps the only truth that matters to anyone, to you and to me, the truth for which we attempt the impossible to experience its splendor and wonder, that truth to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. It is indeed a silent and holy night.
on this silent and holy night, we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing, peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expected parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The heavenly chorus sings, glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Holy Table is set before us once again. Together we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Good after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All are welcome. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Now and always, may you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Savior is born. 
Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. As the body of Christ, we're called, called and sent, sent to love, love and serve, serve the world. world. Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen.